Hello, this is Joe with Personas. Today we're going to talk about how to get rid of pops and clicks in your audio. <laughs> okay, you're wondering, Joe, what's happening? Why are you talking so slowly? I want to demonstrate something for you. So if we turn on the ripple edit mode here, that's going to snap everything to the left that we delete. So I delete that, and it goes all the way to the left. And I can say, hey, that was a great voiceover, but there were too many pauses in between. Let's get rid of all these pauses. So I can just select these, hit delete, select this, hit delete, select this, hit delete, and so on and so forth until we have ourselves a clean, get rid of that, clean piece of audio. So now what happens if I just hit play here? I've connected all of these. Um, they're the same performance, but I've edited a bunch. There's a bunch of pieces of audio right next to each other. Let's just listen and see what it sounds like. Hello, this is Joe with Personas. Today we're gonna talk about how to get rid of pops and clicks in your audio. I've been trying to make this sound worse than it does. I don't know if it's a Studio One thing or just a spoken word thing, but most of those points of the like six or so transition points from one piece of audio to the next, it sounded fine. There was one though that had a little bit of a pop or a click to it. Oh, with Personas. Today we're right there. You hear that? Oh, with Personas. Today we're. Oh, with Personas. Today, okay, today we're gonna to talk about how to fix that. So when you're recording, whether it's voiceover or anything else, if you have a piece of audio standing by itself, you run the risk in a digital system of there being a pop in two places on that piece of audio. One place is at the beginning, one place is at the end in your audio. So the, the beginning of that wasn't bad, but the end, there was a little bit of a ticking sound. Your audio. That's something about when that audio ends, Something about the way the converters handle that, it can sometimes create an audible sound. Sometimes it's very subtle and you don't have to worry about it because it's covered up by everything else in your song. Sometimes it's super obvious, especially if it's on like a lead vocal where you edit two pieces together, for example, um, and you forget to do something, fade them between each other and you get some sort of a pop in your audio right there. That's what I'm talking about in your audio. That is terrible and those can happen. So if you are new to audio and you have these little ticks and pops and clicks in your in your song, you may think, oh, that stinks. Or maybe you don't even notice them. Or maybe you notice them, but you have no clue how to fix them. It's actually really easy in Studio One. So the first thing, what about the end of the beginnings or ends of the files like this here? Yeah. That little there. All you have to do is do what's called a fade. So the two words to remember from today are fade and crossfade. So a fade, if you look at a piece of audio and you look in the top corner, the top right corner or the top left corner, you'll see a little triangle there. That is a little handle that you can grab to create a fade out or a fade in. It's a fade in at the beginning, a fade out at the end. And at its most extreme, it sounds like this, your audio, right? It does like a full fade out. That's not what I use it for most of the time. What I use it for is just to clean up the ends and beginnings of my files. Here's what that sounds like now. Audio, 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 audio. All you hear is the word audio, and then you don't hear anything afterwards. Whereas if I take the fade away, audio, audio, audio. There's that little at the end of it. It's not super bad, but let's move it back a little bit, see if we can make it worse. Audio, audio. Okay, that's even better. So sometimes, there, there, I would say probably 70% of the time, these these ends of files, if you left them alone, are fine. But occasionally they will cause problems. So I like to just, anytime I have an end or beginning of a file, I like to add a little fade to it, just as kind of insurance in case it wants to pop. Because the pops can sound like this in your audio, which can be really annoying. So how do we deal with pops like this? I mean, the first step would be to make sure it's a good edit. So maybe we can move the edit around to find a spot that's less annoying. But an easier solution or the simpler solution to try first is to just select one of these pieces of audio, hold this index finger up in the air and press X on your keyboard. What it does is it does a cross fade between those two pieces of audio. It's technically two fades. There's one fade out and one fade in and they overlap one another and the end result usually is a much smoother sounding piece of audio. In your audio. In your audio. In your audio. So here's the before. In your audio. With that little in the middle and then here is with the cross fade in your audio. 
completely gone. You don't hear it. So that is the magic of the crossfade. What's cool about Studio One is in a lot of instances, like if I were to punch in something here, like hey, we're gonna talk about how to get, hey, we're gonna talk about how, how to get something, something. So if I punch that in, you'll notice something if you use Studio One for very long. When I hit record, it actually did a crossfade for me because it knows these overlapping audio have the chance of making a pop or a click. So we reduce our chances dramatically by making sure there's a crossfade there. So if we'd listen to that, even without touching it, we're gonna talk about how to get something, something pops and clicks. <laughs> so you can hear me hitting the keyboard, but otherwise the crossover points work out really well and there's no weirdness in the audio. So if you are punching in, then Studio One automatically does the crossfade for you. If you're doing comping where you're taking different takes using the comping method in Studio One, it does a crossfade for you. But otherwise, if you're just doing kind of basic editing and you've got a bunch of these empty points here where the two pieces of audio are touching, one thing you can do is just select everything. So hold your mouse. If you've got this right here selected, the link arrow and range tools, hover your mouse on the bottom section of the audio, not the top where it's that little kind of crosshair thing, but down here where it's an arrow, select all the audio and then just press X. And Studio One, being the darling that it is, will go through and do a crossfade at every single point where there is overlapping or adjacent audio. So now if we listen to this, I bet you, I bet you a penny, we don't have any pops and clicks. Hello, this is Joe with Personas. Today we're gonna talk about how to get rid of pops and clicks in your audio. And there you go. So it's not a perfect solution. If you find one, like this one had a little bit of sound to it, of pop. I don't know if that was a pop in the audio or just like a sound of my mouth or something else, like my chair creaks all the time. Um, what you can do next is if you hear that problem, is just come over here and hover over the bottom of the crossfade and you can move the crossfade. So maybe this wasn't a good spot. I see a little blip of sound there. Maybe we go here and that might solve whatever problem we were hearing. Rid of pops and that sounds, I think, better to me. We can try it the other way and go like this if we want, just for good measure. Of pops, of pop, of pop. Yeah, there's a sound there. I think it's just my mouth makes this sound. So maybe we go like this, really close to the second one. To get rid of pops and clip, and now it's gone. So it's not a foolproof thing. You'll need to double check, or if you hear something weird, investigate. But a good kind of habit to get into is once you've got a piece of audio and you've done whatever editing you want to do to it, select it all, press X to make sure there's a crossfade, and then on the ends, make sure you've got just even just a little blip of a fade in and then go back to the beginning of the song and a little blip that was a fade out this is a fade in and now you will be in good shape for no surprise pops and clicks down the road all right that's it for me hope this was helpful for you happy editing i'll see you in the next one